Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining on. We might give it about 30 seconds. Don't you love when you join on these calls? And like, let's give it like five minutes. We're not going to give it five minutes. We already have a good amount of people on. And thank you for joining this Painting with a Purpose virtually our first time ever doing it. So I know we're going to have an absolute blast. Let's give it about 30 more seconds and we'll get started shortly. And this is being recorded and will be uploaded on the Health Source of Ohio YouTube page, as well as uh, sent out to those in participation as well. I'm back. All right, you guys, let's go ahead and get this party started. So thank you again for joining our Painting with a Purpose virtually. You know, in lieu of us being able to have a huge celebration with our More Than Medicine celebration this time of year and coming together with our friends and fellowship and having fun, we have had to shift and pivot much like many folks this year. And we are doing just that. So thank you for shifting and pivoting with us. And if you've participated in our Painting with a Purpose in the past, you might have a familiar face there. Sarah Elam is going to be our lead instructor today. So in front of you, you guys should have all of your tools and materials and everything that you need uh, to help get started. But first, we're also doing a $1,000 Visa gift card drawing. And I'm going to share my screen and uh, we're gonna go and pick that winner. But what I want you to know is that at any point throughout today, through the painting, you are welcome to use the chat box located at the very bottom and you can type any questions you have, or if you need to unmute yourself, like feel free to do that. Uh, we did ask for everyone to mute themselves because you know there's it's hard being on a call and multiple people talking over each other. So uh, we do appreciate that very much. All right, so I'm gonna share my screen and we are going to see who our winner is for our raffle creator. Sarah, can you give me a thumbs up if you can uh, see my screen? All right, good. And can you, can I hear you, Sarah? Can you, is your volume? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. All right, so we are going to pick our winner of our $1,000 Visa gift card. And so this is the first time we've ever used Raffle Creator here with our organization, the first time we've ever offered something like this. Um, so we're so excited to go ahead and get this launched. So we're going to click on pick automatically. And you guys, Sarah, you can see this, right? Okay, all right, good. So we're gonna pick automatically. Oh, I knew I, sh I was afraid if I went like too far that it was going to um, like automatically pick something. Okay. Allison Johnson is our $1,000 Visa gift card winner. Awesome, okay, so uh, we have this information and this is all shared right here. So it randomly selected Allison Johnson as the $1,000 Visa gift card winner, so, so exciting. So thank you again for your guys' participation, not only if you purchased a Visa gift card uh, or the chance to win one and or participating here with our Painting with a Purpose. So we greatly, greatly appreciate it. And know that our Health Source of Ohio Foundation, we are working so hard to be more than medicine for all of the patients that we serve, all of our 18 locations and across Southwest Ohio in the eight counties that we serve as well. So you are making a difference by your participation here today and also by sharing information about Health Source. So at this time, I'm gonna turn over to Sarah Elam and she is going to walk us through how to do this amazing painting and we're gonna have so much fun. Sarah? All right, hi everyone. Um, my name is Sarah with Art and Unwind. I know I've met a lot of you guys uh, before in the past at other events. If I haven't yet met you, um, hello. You guys all should have received um, this little health source bag. Um, inside of it has everything that you need. So you should have six different wood cutouts. You have a leaf, a pineapple, a bunny, a star, a Christmas tree, and a turkey. You should have also received a couple um, things of paint that should be all the paint that you need for today you'll probably have a bunch extra and then you also should have received a sponge brush and a paint brush so if you want to go ahead and get all of that stuff out 
You might also want to grab a paper plate. So if you don't have that, paper plate would be good and a cup of water so that you can rinse out your paintbrush. If you have extra paintbrushes or different size paintbrushes, you can grab those as well. Uh, you don't need them, but it could kind of help you out as, as, as we get going here. So what I'm going to do first is uh, we're going to go ahead and grab your board and your stencil. So we sent an email a couple of days ago that uh, suggested if you wanted to paint your board that you could go ahead and do that or stain it prior to the event. If you didn't get that finished and you wanted to do a quick whitewash on your board, uh, you can take some of the white paint that you received as well as some water on your brush and just kind of quickly go ahead and put a, a coat of, of white on there. Um, it'll, it'll need a little bit of time to dry. So if you didn't quite get that done and you want to do it now, you can just go ahead and do that and then just kind of watch or uh, keep an ear out for how you're going to apply the home on the board. So, um, yeah. Either start with that or go ahead and grab your stencil. If you already have your stuff stained or painted, go ahead and grab your stencil and center it on your board. So you're just going to want to, I just kind of eyeball it, just kind of make sure that the, the tops of the letter and the bottom of the letter are equal distance from the top and bottom of the board. So don't go by the stencil. Look at, or if you have a ruler, you can, you can measure it if you're particular. Uh, measure from the top of the letter to the top of the board and the bottom of the letter to the bottom of the board. Most likely your stencil is not going to be even on the top and the bottom. So just make sure you, you kind of keep that in mind. Um, just a reminder as we go, if you have any questions, if I'm going too fast, I've never done this before, so this is my, my first time. If you have any questions, I'm going too fast, you need me to repeat something, uh, just type in the question, and Chelsea is, is on this uh, Zoom call as well, and she'll, she'll get those questions to me. So, uh, let's go ahead and get started with the stencil. So, we have our stencil here. I'm going to go ahead and just kind of eyeball it. I eyeball things. You don't have to eyeball it, but um, like I said, you can measure it if you, if you want to. I'm just going to kind of eyeball my stencil here, place it on my board. I do have some masking tape, which you don't need, but... If you had some tape, uh, it would just kind of ensure that your stencil doesn't move around on you. So I am just going to grab some tape. I think I'm pretty, I think I'm pretty well centered here on my board. It doesn't have to be perfect. All right, I'm going to go ahead and grab my tape and just tape it down on a few spots. It doesn't have to be crazy taped on just enough so you don't move it or knock it with your hand. There we go. All right, so once you have that kind of taped down there and centered, should be good to go. I'll give you guys just a, a minute or so to get that whole thing situated there. And I'm just going to double check mine to make sure it's nice and straight. Kind of helps if you stand up and look at it. Yeah, I think we're pretty good. All right. So, stencil on, tape down, or if it's not taped down, just kind of hold it. And then what we're going to do is go ahead. I'm going to make sure you guys can see this here. I have a little paint plate. I'm going to go ahead, so I gave you paint, um, enough paint to make the home black. If you don't want to do the home black, you should have, you should have enough of like some of the other colors. But like I said, I did give you black. If you have extra paint at home or you want to do it a different color, then that's totally fine with you. But I did give two pots of black paint to ensure that you had enough. Um, so we're going to go ahead and open those little pots of black paint. And what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead, take your paintbrush, and get that black paint out. Put it on your plate just so you can easily get it off the plate with your sponge brush. I'm just going to start with one. Since we're doing a dark color, you're only going to need to do one coat of paint. So that will be kind of nice and easy here. 
All right, so we have some black paint. We have our stencil on our board. So the first thing that we're gonna do is just put a little tiny bit of black paint on our sponge brush. So less is good. The less amount of black paint, the better, just so we don't have too much paint and we don't want it getting underneath of our stencil. So just get a little bit of paint, make sure it covers. It's kind of hard to see because my brush is black and the paint is black, but just enough to cover the edge of the brush. And then what I always do, I come over here to the board, I always hit on the paper first just to get off any kind of globs of paint. And once you have that, you want to go ahead and move on over to the stencil. So you're just going to kind of go up and down. Like I said, make sure you don't get too much paint on your, your, your brush. And you just kind of tap it down. And then as you're going, always make sure if you reapply the paint, you tap it on the paper first. As you go, you can kind of hold your fingers down around the edge of the paper there, just so the stencil doesn't pop up on you too much. And just go ahead and work your way down. So hit the paper first. Go ahead, bring it on over to the board. And you'll just work your way on down. If you guys want to go ahead and do that with me, I'll just let you kind of go at it here. If you do mess up a little bit, I'll kind of show you how you can fix it, or I'll explain how you can kind of fix it if the paint goes underneath too much. Make sure you're holding the paper down on those, that H because it'll pop up on you a little bit. Anybody have any questions? We all good so far, hopefully. Sarah, I will ask a quick question. So let's say yeah. I run out of paint or I want to paint something different color that I don't have. What kind of paint do you recommend that we should buy? So this is just acrylic paint. So you can go to Michael's um, or Hobby Lobby and it's just regular acrylic paint. And you can get, they have like those little kind of craft tubes of it with a bunch of different colors. So yeah, if you see, if you want to get some fun colors or something like that and you don't like the colors that, you know, we provided, that's totally fine. You can go. They're like 99 cents for a little uh, thing of paint if you want some other kind of color that you don't see here. But we have all of our basic primary colors, so we'll be able to kind of mix up. I mean, I just used the colors that I gave you for my, my pieces here, so... You've got some options still, although I always, uh, I always suggest, well, I always recommend being as creative as you want to. So if you have glitter or sequins or something like that and you want to make these even more blingy and more fun, that's always an option for you. All right, we're just going to keep working our way down on these letters here. I'm kind of starting to see since I um, since I made my board white, I'm seeing a few little spots that I might have to go back and, and touch up, but for the most part, the black covers pretty well. And everybody kind of tends to use different amounts of paint. So some people, you know, are a little bit more sparing when they use paint. And some people aren't, and that's that's totally fine. But if you need anything, you know, like I like we just said, if you need anything, any extra or whatever, you can always, uh, it's just kind of regular old acrylic paint. You might even have some at home if you have any craft cabinets or craft drawers. All right, I'm going to get some more black paint here. If you don't have any paper towels, you're going to want um, to grab a paper towel or a napkin just so when you clean your brush out so you can get all the excess water off. So just kind of keep that in mind.
while Sarah is getting that paint, I would like to invite you guys as you're posting or as you're painting, feel free to send us a selfie or feel free to post in your in our group chat a picture of you or feel free to send it to myself uh, later on of your finished product or as you're working on it. Uh, this is just so much fun. I know this is virtual. I know that isn't this isn't how we usually like to get together and uh, celebrate, but you know, definitely during this time, it's so much fun. And again, thank you to Sarah for doing this for us. Yeah, it's a little different. This is my first time trying it out. So thank you guys for uh, joining us. This has given me some practice so I can offer it as, a, as an option for my business. Your first time virtually, right? You've done many paintings. Yeah, Just the first time yeah, virtually. Many painting parties. <laughs> Just my first time doing a virtual one. It's a little different when you don't have people like, you know, engaging with you, but... <laughs> I did just contact our Visa gift card winner and she's so excited. So I've already reached out to her. That'll be a nice Christmas uh, gift or a Christmas thing. She can buy some no Christmas kidding. gifts. A thousand bucks. That's stinking awesome. Oh. You look at this kit see what I have. You might randomly hear a child or a baby. I have a I have an eight week old and a six year old. And they are here <laughs> in the background, but they're being pretty good right now. So, Sarah, will you mention again, so what if I didn't have a chance to stain my board or to paint it white, um, or maybe I just want to go ahead and leave it the same wood color? What should I know about that? Yeah. Um, so if you, like I, I, we kind of said at the beginning, um, if you didn't get a chance to, to do that, you kind of you want to do that before we before you apply the stencil. So if you wanted to do a whitewash, that's that's what I did to mine. Is you can take some of that white acrylic paint that I gave you. You just take a brush, like kind of grab a bigger brush. I would not use a sponge brush. If you had a little bit larger of a paint brush sitting at home. Um, just kind of get the brush wet and then dip the brush into the white paint and then you just kind of, you know, just brush, long brush strokes up and down the board. You can also, if you have any wood stain, um, Home Depot, Walmart, Lowe's, those kind of places, they have oil-based and they have water-based stain, um, either one, any of them are good for, for wood. Um, but you just want to do that prior. And if you do a stain, it does take, you know, quite a bit longer to, to dry, so just kind of keep that in mind. Um, the stencil doesn't stick quite as well, so you want to wait a few hours. If you do the whitewash, it should only take, you know, maybe 10 or 15 minutes to dry, and then you can go ahead and apply the apply the stencil. So I've got my home on here. I can already, I'm not sure if you can see it or not, but um, my H is already starting to dry. So this doesn't take very long to dry. I am noticing just a few little spots that need a little extra touch-up. So I'm just going to get a little bit more black paint on my brush and just kind of hit those areas one more time. Make sure you get the edges really good. It's, it's kind of, you know, it's just, it's tricky. You want to get enough paint, but not too much paint that it squirts out the, squirts out the edges. So just as you're working, try to keep that stencil down with your fingers and that'll, that'll kind of help that, that issue. If you try to go over the paint, if, if it's still kind of wet and you try to put a second coat on it, you'll notice the paint's going to lift back up again. So you do have to wait until the paint is mostly dry before you can hit it with the, a second coat. So I'm going to kind of let it be. My M and my E is still a little wet. So I'm going to let that dry just for a little bit. I'll give you guys just a, a minute or so to, to finish up with your first coat. We'll come back and we'll hit it again with a second coat here in a little bit. So I'm going to move this out of the way. And then go ahead and make sure your brushes are all, if you use your your paint brush to get the paint out. Go ahead and make sure it's nice and clean and all the water is out of it. I just use a little paper towel here. Make sure my brush is nice and clean before I dip it in any other colors. All 
All right, so I think it's going to take a few minutes for uh, my letters to dry completely so I can add that little second. I'm not going to add, I'm not going to add a full coat. I'm just going to touch up those little spaces that I see the white poking through. Um, so I'm going to leave my, leave my stencil on my board for now. And I'm going to go ahead and move to these little pieces here. So we've got a turkey, we've got a Christmas tree, a little star, a bunny, a pineapple, and a leaf. So this is how, oh, I'm noticing my camera is a little, oh, there we go, we're back in focus. Um, there we go, we'll do it that way. So these are, these are just how I painted them. You do not have to paint them the same way as I did. Um, what's kind of nice about the turkey is you do have the outline, so you can go in, you can kind of use that as a guide. Um, these are the colors that I chose to use. Like I said, be creative if you want to add glitter, if you want to change the colors up, uh, feel free to do whatever it is you want to do, whatever colors you want to make your turkey. Same for the Christmas tree. Um, I'm going to kind of show you what I did here for some of these. Um, I, I'm going to start with the Christmas tree. So if you're still working on your letters, that's fine. Just kind of keep an ear out. I'm not going to do anything yet. I'm just going to kind of keep talking and explaining things. Um, these are wood, laser, laser cutout, wood, wood, wood cutouts. I kind of like being able to see the wood grain through them. So I didn't do, I just did one layer on most of these. Um, the turkey, I did maybe two layers on, but the feathers and things like that. I just did one coat of paint so you could still kind of see the wood through it. I think it kind of looks neat, but that's totally up to you. If you want to be able to see the wood through it, um, you're going to use just maybe one coat of paint on all these. And if you don't want to see the wood through it, you might have to do two coats of paint. So I am going to go ahead and show you just a couple of techniques that I used for these wood pieces. I'm going to keep them here just so you can glance back at them. Um, so you can kind of see, you know, what I did. If you want to copy it, great. If you don't want to copy it, then you don't have to. So we're going to do the same thing. Um, we're going to get our plate here. And I am, I'm going to start with the Christmas tree. You want to take your little paint pot. So we're going to start with the green. And you don't, actually, you know what? You don't really need the plate for this, I guess. We can just go directly out of the paint pot. It's pretty easy. So you're just going to take a little bit of paint on that paintbrush. And for the Christmas tree, I just did one coat of paint, like I said, again, so you kind of see the wood through it. Try not to get too much paint on your brush, just a little bit. And you're just going to do a nice side-to-side -side brush stroke. It is kind of nice with the single coat of paint. Um, you can kind of see the brush strokes. It just adds a little bit of texture to the tree itself. We have any questions? Are we doing okay? Everyone seems to be doing really good. No questions so far. I've been uh, everyone. Amy Villardo said her painting is coming along great. I know she's painting okay. with her daughter too, so that's great. Okay, awesome. All right, so I got um, I did a coat of green on my my little tree here. So I'm just gonna open my brown. Put a little brown on the bottom. I did want to show you how I did my dots on my tree and my star. Kind of have an easy little way to do that. But once you get the green on there, then you just put the brown on there. Again, just a reminder, make sure you're rinsing out your brush really well so you're not getting your paint colors mixed up. These little things are hard to open and close. All right, put a little yellow on my star here. All right, so kind of have the, the base of the tree done. And then what I did, I think you should be able to see, let me try and get it closer to the camera. Yeah, so I just did like little tiny dots uh, for little ornaments. And the way I did that, I did it on my star as well, like those little, little tiny circles, we can see them. You just take the end of your paintbrush here, and you're just going to dip it in your paint pot. 
It's an easy little way to get a nice, uh, nice circle. Let me move these a little bit, bring this up here. So I just dip to the bottom of my paintbrush in my paint pot, just like this. And you just kind of add your little ornaments on. Same thing for the star. I just did blue and white around my star. So pretty easy. And then you just wipe it off. Do whatever color you want to do on there. Going to add some yellow. Sarah, Gail Covert is painting with her sister Lynn right now, and Amy uh, and her daughter Olivia they sent me pictures, and they actually cut their stencils and they turned their board, so the home is going down long ways. So I love it. That's what this painting is all about. Like Sarah mentioned, with the different like little charms as we're calling them, you can change up the colors, making anything you want, anything that's going to decorate with your home or match. So so fun. I love it. Keep it coming. And we had these, um, we had these kind of specially cut. Uh, it's kind of nice because my father-in-law, he does laser engraving. And so he cut these out for us, which is awesome. Um, and I know there were some people who asked, um, I did get one email, someone asking if they could switch one out for like a snowman. Um, but since we did have them specially cut and made, we don't have, you know, any, any other options right now. But I did notice sometimes, from time to time at Michael's, when I go to Michael's, I'll see some wood cutouts, like with the different seasons. Um, so if, if, you know, if you want to add on and you want to get some more charms for, you know, even more holidays or you want to have some options, um, like I said, sometimes Michael's does have them. I don't know if they'd be the, you know, correct size, but you can always try. Um, Springtime too, we have the Easter Bunny, but just for spring in general, you could always get a nice big flower and add it to there. So this one, this one's really versatile, pretty fun. You can kind of add whatever you'd like. So there's the Christmas tree. Christmas tree is pretty easy. I'm gonna go ahead and put that to the side. There was one other one that I wanted to go over here, and that was the leaf. So I'm gonna show you how to. Um, kind of give the leaf some texture. So can you guys see that? You can kind of see it a little bit. I just did a simple brown leaf and then I brushed in um, some orange. So that was the other thing I wanted to go over. You guys should have one of your paint containers, the one with the black, brown, you should have had a couple whites. There is one that has a little drop of red, you'll see it at the bottom, and then the top is filled with yellow. Those two colors together, red and yellow, make uh, orange. So that's how I got the orange for my turkey. So if you want to go ahead and just, if you take the bottom of your paintbrush and you just mix those two colors straight in the paint pot there, uh, you'll get some orange. And you can do that now or later. But I'm going to go ahead and show you how I did the leaf here. So I started with my brown. And if you want to do the opposite and make your leaf orange or red or yellow or whatever, you can do the opposite. I'm just going to go ahead and show you the technique. I'm going to move these to the side here so you can still kind of see them, but see my leaf. So I just started with the brown. I just put a nice thin coat of brown paint on here. And you're just going to, I just covered the whole thing up. I don't know if you guys have smelled these wood cutouts, but they smell really good. <laughs> you kind of like that wood smell. I thought that too, whenever we were putting them all together, myself and Ellen, who's on here, where I was like, this smells really good. And then I, like, I don't want to sound oh. weird for smelling them, but they, <laughs> I like the, like the wood burnt smell. Yeah. Uh, we do have the Claremont YMCA staff. They're doing a little bit of a team building right now. So they are there and uh, having a lot of fun with us too. Great. All right, so you'll get this whole leaf covered up here with some brown paint. And then if you want to add some texture, like I did to mine, you can kind of see a little bit. While it's still a little wet, I'm going to go ahead and dip into my orange paint. And you just can kind of just take your paintbrush and just do some lines in here. 
You don't want to over mix. If you over mix, you're going to lose your texture. So just kind of fan some, fan some lines in there. You can do just the orange, which is what I did on this one. Um, but if you want to add, you know, some red or some white or whatever and add and give it even more texture, you can. This is one that I think some glitter would spice it up a bit. You can add just a little, oops, I got a little bit of blue. Add just a little bit of red to it. You can't really mess it up to just a little bit of paint and just brush it in. So yeah, so that's a technique uh, that you can use on your leaf there. Pretty easy. The only other one that um, you know you just might want to reference my example for would be the pineapple. Um, I just I did the yellow base green at the top, and then I added those little lines in there to make it look more like a pineapple. So if you want to look back and kind of reference that, uh, when you get to it, you can. Um, I can also, at the end of this, uh, at the end of this call, I, I will shoot an email to everyone. Um, so if you received the email a couple days ago, you'll receive this one out and shoot it out on that same, the same email group. Um, I'll do a picture of this just so you have it. So if you want to go back and reference it without, you know, looking back at the YouTube video, you'll have uh, a reference picture to see everything. The only other one that you kind of got a free hand is this little bunny guy. Um, I started with just a white base and then I added a little face and ears. So that one is just a little bit more of a freestyle. If you don't like the bunny face that I have, you can always, you know, create your own bunny face. You can look up Google Images, see if you can find something else that you like. Uh, but I just did a pretty simple, simple little, little bunny face. So, you guys are working on your charm. You can keep doing that. Or, I'm going to go back and, real quick, I'm going to check on my stencil, my home stencil. And mine is, for the most part, it's pretty much dry. So, I'm going to go back with my black paint and hit those little few areas that I see that the white is still showing through. Make sure I have that nice and covered. You can go back to that or you can keep working on your charms and do this part when you're done. This is my, uh, I haven't had a painting party since this whole COVID thing hit because I don't really want to go to anybody's house <laughs> right now. And I was pregnant for most of this uh, quarantine COVID stuff and now I have a newborn so I'm just being extra careful. But um, yeah, I kind of was excited when Chelsea reached out and had the idea to do one of these via Zoom. I think it's a cool idea. I think it's fun you know we used to be able to gather together i think the biggest one we've had was it like 60 people sarah at the uh little mammy brewery in milford like last christmas yeah that, was, yeah, that one was really oh yeah that one was huge yeah like 50 or 60 people something. yeah it was a lot of people so are you available if other people are interested and in maybe doing something like this virtually how should like they have your email so are you interested in doing more parties like this yeah, yeah, definitely. I'm going to go ahead and post it on my um, on my my page. So if you are interested, you can contact me via my Facebook page. Um, it is www.facebook.com slash art and unwind. You can message me there. Um, if you can't find me, you can always message Chelsea. You can email me. You should have my email since I sent um, everyone an email out. So you can do that. We can do a virtual painting event. I will just... Uh, I, I typically in the past have given people options um, where you can have you know more than one project at an event. I'm going to have to limit it to either a wood project or one canvas project since I'm going to have to kind of be teaching it via Zoom. Um, but yeah, we would do it the same exact way. I'd get your kits together. The host would have to come. We would have to meet so that you can get all of the all of the stuff, but you'd get everything that you need for the event, and we would create a Zoom call and just do it that way. So yeah, definitely, if you're interested, let me know. It could be a fun little, fun little way to do things. 
Um, or if, even if you're not comfortable gathering with your own group, you could, everybody can do it safely at their, at their home. So, yeah, we can do that. Um, all right. If you're not quite where I am, it's totally fine. Keep working. I'm just going to keep going with instruction here um, so you know what to do next. Um, but I, I think I'm done. I think my letters look really good. My letters are pretty covered up. I think I might see one little spot that I need to fix. So I'm going to go ahead and do that really quick. Sarah, can I reuse my home stencils for like future if I want to do a different project or something like that? Yeah, for sure. You can you can reuse it. Um, I mean, you can use it till the paper disintegrates. And since you're putting on this, the, the edges are actually getting more sturdy since you're putting the paint along them. So the stencil will be more sturdy than it was when you started. So yeah, you can use this more than one time. You definitely don't have to throw it away. Just after, like it, on the end, like you can kind of see it starting to curl up. When you, if you were to reuse it again, you might have to get some masking tape and place it behind and maybe stick it down, you know, a little extra reinforcement to stick down there. All right. I think mine is looking good. So I'm going to, you don't have to wait for, for it to completely dry. You can just go ahead and take it on off. Once you're satisfied with the way that it looks, take it on off and you can do whatever you want with that stencil. So yeah, here we go. I've got my home. So I do have a little, um, I have a little mis not mistake. It's not a mistake. It's just a little oopsie on my E here. So I'm going to take my paintbrush and I'm just going to kind of fill it in there. So if you have any little areas, you can always use your paintbrush, fill them in once you get that stencil off. Um, if you did accidentally go through the stencil, I don't have, I meant to bring an X-Acto knife with me and I didn't bring it with me. But if you've been to any past events, you've probably seen me kind of help people with an X-Acto knife. You can, actually, we might have one. So let me, uh, my assistant is going to go see if uh, he can find one here for me. And I can kind of show you. I didn't really, I didn't really mess up too bad. Your edges aren't going to be a hundred percent perfect. I mean, we're using paint, and you know, not we're using just cardstock stencil. So your edges aren't going to be like you know crisp as if we were cutting it out of vinyl or something. But um, I'll kind of give an example here in just a minute of how to fix if you have any little oopsie spots. I'm going to let you guys go ahead and. Continue, get caught up while I get that exacto knife here. Sarah, while you're waiting for Joey, your awesome assistant, and Joey <laughs> happens to be our, the Health Source of Ohio IT director, uh, can you show yeah. me on the turkey how you kind of, what you, what your process was on your turkey? Yeah, for sure. So you have your turkey here. Um, make sure you, if, if, if you're seeing nothing on the turkey, flip it over because it does have some outlines. Uh, my father-in-law was awesome, and he laser engraved some outlines for us to make this a lot easier because this turkey is probably the most, you know, complicated one of the bunch. So all I did with the turkey, I started with the, the middle section. Um, so I used, yeah, let me go ahead and show you this real quick. So you are going to probably want to grab your plate here. I did use two different browns on my turkey. Um, I have a darker brown and a lighter brown. So, it, uh, I mean, in case you're not, you know, used to mixing paint colors or you're not familiar with how to get, you know, lighter versions of a color, any color that you have, if you want a lighter version of it, you add a little bit of white. If you want a darker version of it, you're going to add just a tiny little bit of black to it. So if you wanted to go darker on the brown, you add just a tiny little dot of black and you mix it on up, that'll get you a darker version. If you want, I did a lighter brown for my wings, so I added a little tiny bit of white. So I just started with my paintbrush here. It does get a little tricky. I mean, if you have a smaller paintbrush at home and you want to use that for the beak and parts of the feather, um, you can grab that smaller paintbrush. It just might make your life a little bit easier. But everything is doable with, with this one that I have here for you. 
Sorry, my hand's kind of in the way as I'm painting here, but we'll show you. And the turkey is the only one that I did add two coats to, um, just because I thought it looked better with two versus the one coat. So this is just the brown that I gave you in your kit. And then what I did for the wings is I took, I'm gonna put the turkey here. Um, I took just a little bit of the brown from the pot, I put it on the plate, and then I took a little bit of white. And you just want a little tiny bit of the white, like not much at all, just a little bit on your brush and kind of mix it together. If you want it to be lighter, you'll add a little bit more white. If you kind of want it to be like I did, just add just a tiny little bit, and then you can go ahead and brush that on. Um, brush that on there. And if you add white to a color, it's going to make it less transparent. So like for this light brown, I probably don't really need to do two coats on it. One coat is covering it pretty well. Yeah. So you just kind of keep working your way around. Like I said, on my feathers on my turkey, I just, I use that, that orange that you kind of had to mix in the paint pot. And I, I just painted the background and then I did the yellow on top of it and added that red there. So pretty easy. If you want to do something different, you can do something different. If you want to do yellow feathers in the back and add the orange to the top, you can do that. But these lines are going to help a lot um, with just knowing kind of where to paint and where to go with it. So that is how you do that turkey. All right, I have the X-Acto knife, so I'm going to go back to show you this here. Um, all if, so if you had a little glob of paint that that got everywhere, I have a little, I have a little, little tiny bit right there. It's kind of, it's probably hard to see, but I have a little tiny bit that's kind of off the off the edge here of my end. Um, if you have an X-Acto knife, you can take the X-Acto knife and you just kind of use the edge of it. And just really, really lightly, you want to make sure that the paint is dry. So don't do this if your paint is still wet. Make sure your paint is dry. Where is that? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah there's, some, there's, there's one right there. All right, so if you want to use, make, make sure that the paint's completely dry before you use the X-Acto knife. If the paint's still wet and you try to do this technique, um, it will spread it and make a bigger mess. So. This part of my end, I have a little spot right there. It's, it's already dry. I'm just going to take the X-Acto, just the edge of it. Oops, do it this way. Edge of the X-Acto, and you just very, very lightly kind of scrape at it. If you scrape too much and you have this painted or stained, it's going to pull off the paint. So you just want to go nice and light, and just a little bit at a time. And you can kind of scrape it and just clean up your edges just a little bit. So kind of an easy little way to fix it. Just don't go too crazy. Yeah, I think we're pretty, pretty good. I know the whole less is more concept. I really haven't understood that in my entire life until I try to go paint. Uh, so <laughs> I know that, like I know you mentioned it earlier, less is more, especially with the stencils. So, as we've done so many paintings, I have finally learned that less is indeed more when it comes to this. Yes, yes definitely. Thank you for that life lesson, Sarah. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so guys, I think if you have any questions from anything that I've done so far, like like we said, just just please make sure you type them on in. Chelsea will will get them to me here. Um, I so I made I made a mistake and I left. You were supposed to get these little Velcro pieces in your kit, so I apologize. Um, I forgot to give them to Chelsea. I left them right <coughs> on the kitchen table. So I, Chelsea is going to get these to you. I think she said she's going to mail them. Is that right? Or something? Yeah. Yep. They'll be mailed this week. Okay. So they'll, so they'll be mailed. So you don't need to go out and buy them. Um, but you will have a set of six 
of these, both front and back. You're not going to need all of them. Like I'm going to, I'm going to put just the one side. I'm going to go ahead and show you. So we're going to take, I'm going to kind of center. Once you get the Velcro, you can go ahead and put a piece of Velcro on the backs of all of your uh, little pieces. I put one, oh, I already put one. So I put one on my leaf already. Um, I'm going to suggest that you center this on your board. So center it kind of between the H and the M. We're going to go ahead and put that on there. And then all of your pieces, you can kind of try to center them on all of your pieces, unless you want to, you know, put them a different way. But you'll put the one piece on your board, and it sticks really well. I mean, I don't think you're going to need extra glue or extra reinforcement. It's pretty sticky. And you're going to put um, the other piece of Velcro on the backs of all of these little charms. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that really quick. I'm just going to make sure kind of put your charm on there, sort of see where maybe you need to stick it. Actually, it might be nice if you take this little piece and you put it on there and then you put your charm on, kind of where it goes. Then it will stick in the right place. That's a good idea. There we go. Yeah. Hey, Sarah, we do have a question. Sorry, yes. can you um, tell me how you put the orange on the leaf again? Yes, let me, uh, Okay. I will show that to you again here in just a second. Let me get this bunny on. All right, let me go back to the leaf here. So um, let me move these out of the way. So you want to start with, I'm just going to go ahead and do it again, because I think I can do it again and it not make a difference here. So I started with my brown paint, and you want to just go ahead and put just a thin coat of brown paint on the whole leaf. So if you haven't done that part already, get some brown paint on your leaf. You're going to want to work while this paint is still wet. So just go ahead and cover the whole leaf with just a thin layer of brown. Can you see a little bit better? No, it's kind of dark, I know. Uh, maybe. And once you have the brown paint, once you have the leaf covered in the brown paint, that's when you're going to want to brush in. So while it's still wet, you're going to want to take some of the orange, or you can take some red or some yellow. Let me open mine up here. So just take a little bit on your brush, so not, not very much, just a little tiny bit on your brush, and you'll just kind of lightly brush it in. So try not to overbrush it. If you overbrush it, then you're going to lose that texture. But you just brush it in a little bit here. I'm going to get some red and just brush that in as well. I think I already said it, but this is the one that I think would be nice to have a little bit of glitter on it just to add even more kind of sparkly texture to it. But if you don't have glitter, you just do it with paint and it works just as well. Gives you still a cool effect. So yeah, so just make sure that the brown paint is wet as you brush in the other colors. If you're not quite getting as much texture as you want, um, you can always wait for the whole thing to dry a little bit and then go back over it and add, you know, more. It'll be a little bit more vibrant of texture if the brown is dry and you go over it with the, the orange or the red. So hopefully that answered your question. So if you didn't see what I was doing here with the, the Velcro pieces, um, I think the easiest technique is to go ahead and stick that Velcro piece on the center of your board. And then put the other Velcro pieces, the other side of it. These are very, very sticky. Very, very sticky. Put the other side of it on there. And then go ahead and place your charm on top of it. Press it down. Pull it up. And then you have the Velcro piece where you kind of want it to be. That makes it pretty easy. I'll flip these back over so you guys can reference them again. On this pineapple, um, 
I think I, I already kind of mentioned, I just did yellow on the bottom. I did green on the top. I did, it's kind of hard to see on the camera, but I did brush in while the top was still still wet, just like the just like I showed you on the leaf. I did brush in a little bit of yellow uh, just to give the top a little bit of texture. Um, if you wanted to add glitter to any of these, all you would need is like, you can either buy glitter glue. Um, if you have loose glitter sitting around at home, you just need some Elmer's glue and you can just kind of put some Elmer's glue on there and add some glitter to it if you wanted to. Um, once you have that background complete on the whole pineapple, I just took my brush and got some black and just did these little cross cross lines here, make it look more like a pineapple. Sarah, can That's you bring pretty. the top of that pineapple um, up a little closer to the camera to see where you brushed in a little bit of that color? Okay. Can you see it a little bit? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So it's, it's not a lot. It's just a little, it's a little bit of texture there. I'm gonna gonna go ahead and finish my little Velcro pieces here. So we do have Turkey Day coming up. It's, oops, I did that the wrong way. I cannot believe today is November the first. I just I cannot believe no. it. This year has gone slow but fast. Fast, if that makes any sense. <laughs> parts of it have gone really slow, parts of it have gone really fast. The fact that it's not March and it still feels like March, like, it's a little different. Yeah, it's a little, little different. Oh, I'll stick my turkeys on there. Okay. All right. I just love that turkey. He is so cute. I know. I think he's my favorite one. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, <laughs> If you have any other, oh, I'm on this camera now. So that is your finished product. Pretty, uh, pretty, pretty easy, but there's a lot of room for some creativity. So you can make these as fancy, as sparkly um, as you want, or you can just kind of do it basic, just like this example, and it still be pretty awesome. So if you do want to hang these up, um, you can buy those. They're just those little zigzag simple little hangers on the back. These aren't very heavy, so if you added just two to the back, um, that would be an easy way to add a little hanger. You can buy them, again, at Walmart, Lowe's, Home Depot. They're pretty cheap. They're just little metal things that you can hammer in tiny little nails to them and, and have that be a way that you can hang them. Um, you can buy picture hangers. So these aren't very heavy, so I don't think you're going to need a picture hanger for it. Um, but yeah, you can hang it on up and show it off. Um, if you guys have any other questions, you can get them in now, and I can go ahead and answer them for you. Um, if not, I do want to see some finished, uh, some finished ones so I can see how you guys did them, especially the ladies who are doing theirs uh, this other direction. That was a great idea. Um, just depending on where you want to put it on your wall, it's a great idea to kind of switch it up if you need to. You just cut those stencils and center them on there. I'm going to go ahead and put that back down. Like I said, I will uh, send an email out here just as soon as we're done with a picture of all of the cutouts. So if you just want to pull it up on your phone or your computer and reference them uh, while you continue working, you can do that. If you want to see just kind of what I did, um, you can use mine or you can go freestyle and do it your own way. So. Yeah. Chelsea, are there any uh, any questions? Or Chelsea, do you have any other questions or anything you want me to cover? No, I think we went through everything. Beth Martin, I know that Beth was working with her daughter on this fun project. So thank you, Beth, for participating and for supporting our foundation. And hopefully you and your daughter had some fun today. Fun today. I know Beth, she just said it was tons of fun. So that's great. No, I think you've answered everything. And I feel like, you know, people can kind of take it for their own creativity at this point. You guys do have any questions many of you have my cell phone number so feel free to call or text and i'm happy to help and again we cannot thank you enough for spending your your sunday afternoon with us and uh the Bengals won i mean it's going to be a great week for you we're again this is the time the thankful month and we're so thankful for your support for our foundation all right awesome. anything else all right. yeah amy Villardo said thank yeah. you so much all right, I think that is it.
All right. Well, thank Any you last guys. Questions? Give them about maybe five more seconds. Look at that yes. quick and in an hour within an hour. I mean, that was awesome. And thank you, Sarah <laughs> and Joey and Kai and Cora. Uh, I know you guys, this has definitely been a team effort and family effort on your yes. guys' part. Oh, there might be one more. Yes, yeah, we got little baby right oh, here. Look at her, eight <laughs> weeks old. Eight Love weeks it. old. She's been good, sleeping away. So. <laughs> yes. uh, Gail Coatford, uh, who also is serving as our Health Source Foundation president. So her and her, list, her sister Lynn said they have a blast and um, that they've enjoyed it as well. So. All right. All right. Well, thank you, Steve. Bye. All right, guys. <laughs> Thanks, Sarah. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Bye. Bye.